Sorry, yeah. 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 Ed Adams is a music cataloger for print and antiquarian materials at Harvard University's Edna Kuhn Loeb Music Library. Dr. Adams is a member of NEMLA's Technical Services Committee, as well as MLA's CMC and Coding Standards Subcommittee, and Linked Data Working Group, the Big Frame Task Force. A former assistant professor of voice at St. Olaf College, she holds a doctorate of musical arts in voice and a master's in music theory from the University of Michigan and undergraduate degrees in voice and German studies from Oberlin College and Conservatory, in addition to an MSLIS from Simmons College. Dr. Adams is also active as a freelance translator and voice teacher in Boston. Please welcome Anne Adams. Um, um, so I'm really excited to not scare Um, so many of you will remember um, um, that Kevin Spence uh, from NEC and I presented on the new LC vocabularies last year at Holy Cross, um, the Library of Congress Medium of Performance Thesaurus, and the Library of Congress Genre Form Terms. While the basic structure of the genre terms has not remained the same, so I will not be talking about them, there have been some coding changes that you performance terms, um, the media performance of the source, which I'll end up being on. Um, and there's also this somewhat newer vocabulary, which is not specific to music, but which is being used more and more, um, and that's the Library of Congress demographic group terms. I'm going to talk a little bit about what that is and how it's being used. Um, so just to review, um, I'm sure all of you know, the subject headings can sometimes be long and Byzantine. They can include uh, the subject, what the thing is about, what it is, so a score, for instance, um, the meaning of performance, so the violin, well, etc., um, demographic information, geographic information, and chronological information. All of that can sometimes be squished in. So the, as we move towards uh, link data world, we are trying to parse all of this stuff out into individual fields. Um, and that entails creating lots of new vocabularies for these fields and uh, giving them a place to reside. So, um, as we've got a couple of examples of some of the longer subject headings, composers, Germany, 20th century, or trios, but I'm going to the scores and parts. Okay, so, oh, I lost my heading. Okay, um, so um, currently we are still using these subject headings, but we are moving away from. And uh, yes, for those of you who are thinking ahead, we will be getting discrete fields for geography and chronological uh, terms, but that's a little ways off yet. So, so in the future, the subject I think, will only have that about this. When is this about? Okay, so the demographic group terms. This, uh, what is it for? It describes both creators and contributors. And it also in, in describes the intended audiences, so information that would have earlier been included in the LC head, the subject headings. Um, as of January 2016, there are 27 terms, but they are already in uh, pilot phase three, which means they're accepting new proposals. So that number is growing uh, constantly. This, uh, these terms are organized uh, into categories. Uh, if you may remember some of the other terms are in hierarchy, so if you have violin, that's a member of a bone string family, et cetera, et cetera, and it goes up. Um, these are a little bit more loosely organized, and a term can belong to one, more than one category. So, for instance, uh, the girls are, would be both in age and uh, gender. So, uh, so I'm going to just give you a brief little glimpse of coding. This information is much more, it is uh, explained in much more full, uh, fully fleshed out in the MARC documentation. So I'll send you there for more information. The fields are very basic. You have, uh, or can be more complicated, but basically you have the authorized term in the subfield A, and then you have a demographic group code which you do not necessarily have to put in, but can be useful if 
you're saying, like, this is what I want to pull out. Um, and for the catalogers in the room, <laughs> the code is not repeatable. So if you have, um, for instance, more than one uh, demographic group German, say you want to say uh, Germans and boys, for some reason. Um, German voice. I don't know. Um, <laughs> it would actually have to have two separate fields for that if you're going to use the group code because you can only use one group code per field. So that was the painful mark coding um, So here's an example of a version of Pierre and the Klavierstücke für kleine und große Kinder. It's a piano for hands for little and big children. Um, so you can see it's got uh, piano music for hands. Two of it all would be the 650. Um, the uh, 382, we all know about that already, um, for the uh, medium of performance. The 385 is the audience. So you see you have a subfield N for age. That's the code for that. And then the term itself is children. And then a source code goes in subfield 2. Uh, the 386 is the creator code, and uh, again, you might not always want to bring this out. Uh, most of this is being done for when those terms were in the subject heading and you want to parse it out. So that's the main point of it. Um, more examples which have disappeared. Okay, okay, something happened there. Um, so you have the uh, collection of music by women composers. It's another example. Um, you can use a 386 for occupation composers, 386 for gender women. And notice there that we have to have two separate fields because we have two separate uh, codes for that. Or, if you feel like it, you can leave all the codes and stick them all to 386. Um, and again, that would probably be a house decision of how you would do that. Same sort of thing with African American women composers. Um, you can have three separate fields, one for occupation, one for ethnicity, and one for gender, um, or put them all together without the codes. Um, so that is basically the demographic range terms. They are not being used a ton yet, I would say, but it is sort of where things will be going as the subject headings get more and more parsed out. So again, it's probably a house decision on whether or not you're going to start doing it. Another resource out there. Uh, the documentation for this is at the LC site. Um, I will, these will be posted on the NIMLA website at some point in time, so it's will be out there. Um, or I can send copies of this documentation to anybody who would like it. But it's pretty findable on Google as well. Um, and the vocabulary itself is in the classification web and the link data service. The um, terms, never mind. Um, but those are easily findable. The same place where you would find medium performance and genre terms. Um, medium of performance. Presentation decides to change. Um, the only thing I wanted to talk about in this is you'll remember we talked about um, the, this new vocabulary last year. The main reason that I want to talk about this is that there has been some change in the actual coding, um, primarily with totals. Um, these are not, they're active in OCLC, so you can put that off of them, but LC has not actually sent out the notice that they're active, so um, we're waiting until that final moment, which should be sometime this month. I would think within the next week or two. Um, the main difference is, uh, for those of you who remember, the subfield S was the total number of performers. Um, that has now changed a little bit. So if there are performers performing alongside an ensemble, they actually go with a subfield R now, just to make life difficult. And then the subfield T is going to be for the total number of ensembles. So that's the total of all 
subfield P. So I'm going to give examples. It's super confusing. So examples. Right. We have a piece for string quartet. This is the this one is the first one. It's fairly clear. So the first one, um, string quartets would be the, sub, the subject heading that breaks apart in meaning of performance into two violins, viola, and cello. So you'll see the subfield A is for the instrument, the um, subfield is the mic, subfield N is for the numbers, and then at the very end you'll see that subfield S is for the total number of performers performing. And then subfield 2 is for source code, say where you got it, what have you learned? Um, so, this next one shows some of the differences. You'll have, um, this is chorus of sacred with instrumental ensemble. Notice how the mixed chorus is a subfield E, which is how we use that. Um, and now we can total those ensembles with the subfield, I'm uh, sorry, the mixed chorus subfield E and the total with subfield T. So this one shows that both all the fields being, well, the RMT being used. So you'll have, if you have soprano, alto, tenor, bass, voice soloists, they are totaled in the subfield R. The two ensembles are sub, uh, totaled in subfield T. Um, one way that might be easy to remember is that R and T can make together. You can have T without R, but not R without T. R is never by itself, and S is always by itself. Just to confuse everybody <laughs> So it really isn't as bad once you start using it, but I, um, I did want to at least go through it once so that when you start looking at this stuff, you're not like, what does that mean? Because the R was sort of a compromise that we came up with. Um, originally, it was going to just be S and T, it was felt that they were somewhat misleading. So um, I'm going to uh, uh, brave the uh, crowd and ask if anybody actually has any questions. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So the gender issue is definitely one of uh, a final answer has not come forward on that at the moment. There are several vocabularies for gender. LC has not come forward to recommend one or another. The LCDGT is one place to get that information. Uh, ISO has one. Um, in fact, let's see if I can get. Um, oh, let's see if I can get there. Yeah. Uh, it 
so one of the things that I'm wondering is in the authority file, um, are, they, are they linking the uh, country codes current? Because the question of what Schumann was in Schumann's time is really, uh, and so who would be establishing that? And how are they establishing that? That, I don't actually know the answer to that. Um, I haven't. Um, I don't think they've started to use those terms in the authority file that I know of. I certainly am not using them in my authority work. Um, and that's a really good question, because even in the BIM file, it's sometimes yeah. tricky if you're using a 752 field to say, well, it wasn't really Germany then. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's true all over the world that there's issues of what was that place at that time, and do we call it what it is now or what it is then? I think, by and large, people are using current terms, um, but that is not always an accurate representation of what you're talking about. So, yeah, I don't know the answer to that. Any other questions? Yeah, okay. I don't know if this is a question or just something that to think about, but right now, as part of these fields don't show up in a public view in the OPAC. Um, but I, I think the hope in the future is that our future catalogs um, or search tools, these will be able to be used to parse things out. But it's a big question that we don't have an answer to yet. Is that how does it appear to our users and how does this work for search? I think, yeah, no, it's a huge question. And the thing is that since the LCSH terms will eventually go away, um, the information has to be in there somehow. Um, so eventually, the OPAS will, will just have to reflect that. Um, at this, when the when they are when the fields are approved in LC, um, that's when we need to have a talk with your OPAC folks and say, you know, maybe we should be looking at this, or you may make the decision is we're going to wait until the subject headings are, are deprecated and then we will talk about. Um, showing that. So it's, because right now it's duplicate. Um, in the same way that Sean reform terms are duplicate uh, to a certain extent. They're somewhat different, but somewhat duplicate. Um, so it's a little question of how we're going to be doing that. Yeah. Um, could you, just because I haven't really been using um, the uh, medium of performance terms, have they come up with a way to standardize optional instruments or substitution instruments? Uh, uh, so those are two different issues. The uh, so if it's a uh, subject like you, you use flute or OO for a part or something like that, that's a subfield P for an optional instrument. If it's this can be done with flute and OO or flute by itself, um, the standard way is to be two separate three eighty twos, one with the version with flute and one with the version with flute and OO. So. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah. Did you use like different animals? Um, the I mean we are, we still have sorry this uh, we still have the um, subfields for uh, doubling and for optional instruments. The doubling is D. Nicely we have one that makes sense. <laughs> um, and the uh, optional one is P. I guess you could say op. <laughs> <laughs> P. Um, uh, Numanis are my friend. Uh, anyways, so those exist. And uh, are you are we still coding the 048 field? Or is this is, I remember originally this was to replace the 048 field, but I I've seen inconsistencies in OCLC records. And you will probably always see inconsistencies. <laughs> <laughs> OCLC is communal and everyone does different things. There are some places that are still using 048 and then someone else will come along and say, no, only 382 and well, and you know, to be nice, you don't take out the 048. But they are repetitive, but uh, however, we are not using the OFR8 original cataloging. But um, the idea is not to take stuff out if it's not wrong, because certain impacts will use that. So. Questions? Thank you all for being remarkably patient. That barrage of coding and catalogs came.